How's it going? Um, I know it's been a little while since I made a video. The other day I was just thinking, what are the differences if I'm shooting in Cine 4 versus S-Log 3? If there's really a big difference, and if so, how does it compare? If it's gonna give me a better image, if the grading's gonna be a lot better? Um, just wanna see how it looks like, so that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. I'm just gonna be shooting a bunch of a little b-roll. Um, just shoot some random stuff, maybe head out to the basketball courts, shoot some stuff there. I have a friend that's coming, we'll see if I can get anything done. But in the meantime, I'm going to be shooting everything in Cine 4, and I'm also going to be doing the duplicate in S-Log 3, and then I'm going to be grading it to the best of my abilities, and hopefully they turn out really good. Um, see which one's going to be easier to use, and which one I recommend the most. And I do want to apologize about the audio, because... I did lose it at the film festival that I was at about two weeks ago, um, so I am using the onboard microphone right now, so I guess I'll finish it off here and just shoot some b-rolls, so I guess I'll see you in a bit. sequence, little bit of roll. Um, comparing the differences between using Cine 4 and S-Log 3, and I tried to match it as closely as I could and grade it to the best of my abilities. It did take me a little while to do this because I was learning a brand new program. I was using DaVinci Resolve before I was using Premiere, which was a lot easier to edit in. But with Resolve, it's a lot easier to color correct and you have a lot more control, a lot more freedom, and it doesn't degrade your image as well. On top of that, I shot everything in slow motion on my Sony a6500, which I've come to realize isn't the best quality in 1080p, so the quality wasn't that good. I mean, the 4K is phenomenal, but the 1080p slow motion was just, it's okay. So that's why I was like a little iffy if I should even do this, because grading like low quality 1080p just doesn't give me the best results, so I wish I was comparing 4K rather than 1080p. When I was shooting the comparison between Cine 4 and S-Log 3, I should have properly exposed, well, exposed a little bit better with my S-Log 3 because it is fairly difficult to expose. So it does take a little bit more time and this was my first time using it. So I was running into a little bit of problems, but I wish I learned how to expose a little bit better. I mean, it still worked out, so hopefully this comparison was good. So right now I'm gonna be running into the differences between using Cine 4 and using S-Log 3 and which one is the better choice and which one is good for which scenario, and hopefully that will help you determine which one is better for you. So the first one that I'm gonna be talking about is Cine 4. That's the one that I use the most often simply because it already gives me a little bit of a look. It has the contrast, it has a little bit of color, and it's just much easier to color correct, and it just looks a lot better for the most part. Um, this is something that I use mainly for vlogging. So anytime I don't wanna be doing a lot of color correction, this is what I use pretty much 90% of the time. But if I am doing anything more cinematic, well, now that I started using S-Log3, I might start to use that because it just 
gives the image a little bit more cinematic looking, I guess you can say. It just doesn't have the contrast and the saturation punched in. So with S-Log3, you are able to tweak it and it just looks nicer, I guess you can say. It is a lot easier to expose Cine4 because you just look at your camera and you can see simply by the waveform or by the little exposure compensation thing on the bottom, whatever the thing is, you know, like the zero EV or like the plus one plus two tells you how over or underexposed you are. So it's great because you can see clearly what your exposure is. But in S-Log3, it is a lot difficult because that whole EV plus minus one, two, whatever it is, that's basically useless. That's not what you look at. The way I have been judging its exposure is by looking at the histogram and also by looking at the zebras. So I crank my zebras to 100. So anything at 100 and over will be overexposed. So you will start to see zebras. So the way I have been exposing is you have to expose as bright as you can without actually clipping your whites. So you wanna to go to the very point where your whites start to clip and then just dial it down one or two notches, just enough so it's not clipping your highlights. So with S-Log3, like I mentioned, you have to overexpose your image and you have to do it at least two stops, if not more. I prefer to do it maybe three stops. It really, really depends on the situation, but I do wanna have it as bright as possible. In post, you are gonna be bringing it down and giving it contrast. So the reason you do wanna overexpose is because it is shooting at a high ISO because it gives you a lot of dynamic range. So you do wanna lower the exposure in post so it gets rid of that grain so you don't see it as much. The plus side is you will see a lot more details in the shadows as long as you expose properly because if you don't, then you are gonna be seeing that grain. So just make sure you are overexposing your image at least two stops. In post, all you have to do is just play around with your curves and you should be fine. So if you decide to use S-Log3 for your films, then I would highly recommend using the gamut preview button. I forget what it's exactly called, but it will help the gamma assist. That's what it is. Um, it will help you preview the shot. So it's gonna give you a little bit of like a LUT built into the camera. It's not gonna record that way, but it's gonna help you see the colors. It's gonna help you with the contrast. So you are able to see the image a lot better than if you were to use just straight up S-Log3 in camera because it's pretty much washed out and you can't see what is in focus, how it looks. You can't see what your white balance is, nothing. It's very difficult to judge anything. So using the gamut assist really helps a lot. The difference between Cine4 and S-Log3, which one I am going to be using and which one would be the best one for you, really depends on the situation. So if you are shooting any low light or dim situations, I would probably stick to Cine4. You don't really need the high dynamic range in low light shots, so it should be perfectly fine. But if you are ever shooting in bright conditions, S-Log3 is probably gonna be my number one choice for right now. It is gonna be a little bit difficult to work with and get used to, just simply because it's harder to expose and harder to see the monitor. But I find that the image does look a little bit nicer and it can be a little bit better to grade. You can see a lot more details in the shadows, but as soon as it does get a little bit darker, like in this video, I was using it during the sunset. So it started to actually get a little bit too dark in some parts where I did have to bump up the ISO and that is something that you should not be doing with S-Log3. It does come native at 800 ISO on the Sony a6500 and I believe on any of their Sony cameras, the higher end ones, the full frame cameras, it is at 1600 ISO, so it is a lot higher. And basically you don't wanna be uh, changing your ISO. You don't wanna be going any higher and you can't really go any lower. So you have to keep it at that negative ISO because it does give you the widest dynamic range possible. And as soon as you change it, you're gonna start losing all that detail. So you might as well just go back to Cine4 or another picture profile that you're using and change your ISO that way. That will probably gonna give you a little bit better results. It's not gonna be as grainy and it's just gonna be overall a little bit easier to grade. 
So I guess that's my conclusion with using Cine 4 and S-Log3. Bright sunlight, daytime conditions, definitely use S-Log3. Might take you a little while to get used to it, but the results are gonna be fantastic. If you are shooting in darker or dark situations, then I would stick with Cine 4. Um, you're just gonna get a lot less grain and your footage is gonna look a lot nicer. Plus, you don't really need the whole dynamic range at night, unless somehow, I don't know. No, still doesn't work, no. Honestly, I really don't think it's needed. I've never come across that situation where I needed it, so I think you should be fine. So yeah, so I guess that's it. Um, if you found this video helpful, uh, leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel right below, right there. Or is it right there? I keep forgetting. It's right here, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. So. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.